Hey guys, this is Manifesting Better and I'm back with another video and another topic that needs to be addressed. I also have an Instagram account, the link for that is in the description box below. Coaching is also available, the link for that too is in the description box below. Today's video is something which is highly requested and this is something that I feel will help a lot of people. So let's just get to the start. The video is how a healthy relationship looks like. I had many comments on my videos and I had many comments on my posts and reels and especially in the Q&As, people asking me that I haven't ever been in a healthy relationship. How do I define what it looks like? How do I understand what a healthy relationship is? I want to be in one, but I don't know what it looks like because all my life I have been in toxic relationships. So how can I identify what a healthy relationship looks like? How can I identify the qualities I would have if I was in a healthy relationship? And how can I identify the qualities of the relationship and the qualities I should look for in my partner while creating boundaries, while understanding this and while manifesting this? So let me just clarify all of that for you. And I'm really excited for this one. So the first step that you can do while you are understanding, see, one habit I have all of my clients do, the first task I have all of my clients do is as soon as we, as we are trying to get to a topic. So let's say we are trying to manifest a healthy relationship. The first thing I have them do is I have them list down what they want the relationship to look like, how they want themselves to be in that relationship, what would their life look like, how would their habits be, how would their mindsets be, what would their boundaries be. Because when we have something in uh, we have clarity over something, we have something in a clear way, it's easier to achieve that because we have it in an objective form, right? So the first habit that you should inculcate while manifesting things, even in money and especially in relationships, is to understand what you actually want. Getting clarity over that in a detailed manner will always be helpful. For that activity, the first step that I you can take and if you haven't been in a healthy relationship before is you can search for people who you think are in a healthy relationship. So it can be one of your friends, it can be some celebrity, it can be your parents, it can be a family member, it can be a sibling, anyone you think is in a healthy relationship and you can take some traits and qualities from their relationship that you feel are a part of a healthy dynamic and how you can inculcate them in your life. That's the first step. The second step is that you can find out some friends who you think have good qualities that would be good in a relationship. So let's say I have a friend who is very supportive. So in my mind, I think that that would be a very good quality in a relationship. I can take that from them, right? Just like that, you can find out more people who you feel have good qualities and you think would be good in relationships. But if after, usually these two activities will give you a lot of clarity. Now, after that, let me give you some points from my side that I have seen are a very good, are very important components of a healthy relationship. And this is not just my experience. I have worked with a lot of clients around 43, 4400 clients now. And this is experience for all of them, right? This is an experience from all of them. Many of them have been coming to me for relationships. So this is an experience based on all of them. And these are some characteristics that I feel are very common in a healthy relationship. So the first one is trust. Now, when I talk about trust, trust first starts with yourself. First, you trust yourself. And believe me, all of these habits that I would be telling you these first need to be put in yourself these first needs needs to be habit of you you should have these habits first before even trying to look them in in a partner because you need to first work with that you need to first have that mindset act accordingly and then you manifest healthy relationships with people because you are also a part of that relationship right your reactions your responses are also very important so coming back to trust trust first starts with yourself, which means I trust myself and I trust my worth in my mind and I know that I deserve a healthy relationship. 
that I can demand respect and I can demand not in a bad or an oppressive way, but I can demand healthy respect from people. I deserve that respect. Right. The second is commitment. Now, when we talk about commitment, the commitment is first towards yourself, which means I will put my needs and I will take care of them. I will put my needs in my hands and I will take care of them. It's my job to first fulfill my needs. And then it's my job to fulfill some basic needs of my partner that in any relationship is expected. And it's also my partner's job to fulfill some uh, of my needs. And it's their job to make themselves happy. It's not my job to keep constantly giving them validation. Just like it's not their job to keep constantly giving me validation. Right. If it's a healthy dynamic, then we both are first happy and OK within ourselves. Only then we can make each other happy. The third one is boundaries. Now, this is a very huge topic. I have a separate video on this, so I will link it down below. But boundaries is a very essential part of a relationship. There needs to be healthy boundaries between you and your partner. They can be boundaries related to your work. They can be boundaries related to intimacy. They can be boundaries related to friendships. They can be boundaries related to how you want to be treated. Just make sure that these boundaries are not coming out of insecurities. So if you don't want your girlfriend to have zero uh, male friends, that's probably coming out of insecurity. She can have male friends. It's fine. As long as there is a mutual respect between you two and there are healthy boundaries, it's something that you should be respecting. You should also be respecting that they have other priorities in their life, just like you should have other priorities in yours. You should have a life outside of your partner. You should have friends outside of your partner. You should have work outside of your partner, your job, your business, whatever it is that you do for a living is outside of your partner. That should be a priority. Right. The third thing that comes is communication, which means you should trust yourself enough to be open and vulnerable in front of someone by telling them your needs. Again, needs, not insecurities, right? If you want her to not wear any short clothes or want her to not do all those things, it's probably coming from an insecure place. Or if she tells you that you cannot uh, even text your colleagues, in, even if there is just a friendship, not coming from a good place, right? If, if you want someone to call you thousand times a day, that's probably coming from taking some validation from them, not something that is healthy, right? So communication, but communication about your feelings, communication about a healthy dynamic and healthy boundaries, right? La uh, and the next thing is worth. My worth is not dependent on my partner loving me and their worth is not dependent on me loving them. Same goes with prioritization. I am not prioritized only because my partner chooses me. I am not chosen only because my partner chooses me. I am not happy only because my partner is in my life. Yes, they can add a great deal to it, but that's not the only component of it. The next thing is we both should have separate lives outside each other, which means you should have friends of your own. You should have hobbies of your own. You should have things that you like to do that maybe don't involve your partner. Maybe uh, you run an Instagram page where you post some things that you like. Maybe you are a poet, you post poems. Maybe you capture pictures and post them on your page. Maybe that is a part of your life that your partner is not involved in. Maybe you, you and your friends go out and meet uh, every weekend. And if, as long as you are giving each other time, maybe that's something that you like to do. So it's very important to have separate lives outside of each other, because if we don't, then slowly but surely what happens is that that person becomes a pedestalized figure in our life and we keep taking validation from them and them alone. So that's why when they are maybe not giving us that validation for a few days, we start getting obsessed with it. The next thing is friends. We both should have friends of our own and it's okay if they are mutual friends, but there will always be some friends that are first your friends and there will be always be some friends that are first her friends. And it's very important to spend time with your friends and which are which is just your time. Like like people say, go out with the boys or go out with the girls. It's very important to do that. It's very important to go out and have some time with just your friends because it creates a dynamic where you both trust each other and where you are able to 
actually go out and have separate lives. The next thing is providing each other space. If your partner wants some space, it's your job to give it to them. Them asking for space is not them rejecting you. Them asking for space is not them abandoning you. Them asking for space is probably them dealing with that part of themselves so that they can come out later and be in a healthy dynamic with you. And it's your job to understand that I have to give them that space as they have to give that space to you when you are angry or when you need some time so that you don't create conflicts which are not there. The next one is solving conflicts, which means that when you are under a conflict, when you are under a fight, it's very important to understand your mistakes in it. And it's very important to take care of that as you expect your partner to do so. Because you cannot clap from one hand, you always clap from two. In any fight, usually there is some part of you that is being neglected by you that needs to be worked on. Right? So a healthy relationship requires that. Now, these are the qualities that I am going to be sharing right now. But a last point, this is for people who are not coming from a good place and who even after all these tips are having difficulty finding out what a relationship, a healthy relationship should look like for them. For them, I would tell them one advice that instead of trying to find out the part of your partner or the part of the relationship qualities, start trying to find out how you want to feel in a relationship. Start trying to find out how you want that relationship to look like. And not just in the terms of characteristics, but in terms of how you want to feel on a daily basis. That is very important and that can be a very good first step to start with. Guys, I will say this again as I said it at the start. These qualities are first supposed to be in you. It's your job to first have these qualities within yourself and then expect your partner to have them. Right? Yeah. Uh, if you guys have any qualities that you feel should be a part of a healthy relationship, please put them down below and it will help people. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.